We are live and welcome everybody to this first Return to Learn ThingLink webinar of 2020 and the first time we've done this. So welcome to you all, wherever you are watching us. I know that we've got people from the UK, people from the States, people from Italy, people from all over. So a really warm welcome to you all. We've lined up a fantastic webinar for you um, this afternoon, this evening, good morning, wherever you are. And we hope that it gives you a really good mix and a feel of, of what's happening with ThingLink, especially during this year, as we've seen ThingLink grow exponentially. So I'm just going to share my screen with you and um, share some of the nice um, agenda items that we've got coming up for you. So to start off with, we have a welcome from Ula uh, Maria, who's the founder and CEO of ThingLink. Ula's um, been a real inspiration, personal inspiration for me. Um, so I'm just delighted to welcome Ula to officially open our webinar. We're then gonna have a little bit of a demo slam, lessons from lockdown. We have six ThingLink examples for you, um, which are just gonna be delightful and really inspire you with some of your own uses of ThingLink. I'm delighted to say that after that, we're gonna be looking at something which has been really close to our hearts. And we've seen ThingLink being used for lots of different reasons, but there's one use case which has been really, really inspiring. And we've been developing this work with a colleague in Tallahassee in Florida. We're then gonna show you a little bit about our roadmap for ThingLink. You know, what, what are our plans? Um, show you how we've been listening to you as well and your feedback. And then uh, what we're gonna do, sneaky peek time, professional development plans for the future that's coming up. So our featured educators, we have Amanda from Scotland. Amanda is a primary school teacher. She's going to be showing you some of her phenomenal work and you might even see her dog um, speaking in one of the tags. We have Laurie who specializes in maths um, in primary schools in Texas. And then we go across to Italy where we have Carmen and Carmen's got some fantastic examples explaining coronavirus. We then are moving to Rachel in England and Rachel works for Leo Academy Trust and they've been using ThingLink to really help educators get the best out of their tools during lockdown. We're then going to hear from our partner and ThingLink friend, El Michelle, directly from Tallahassee in Florida. But I can't start introducing our featured educators without saying a big hello and a warm welcome to Emily. And Emily is the school captain of Sterling High School. And Emily's going to be showing you how Emily and her team of captains have worked together to help produce really nice visual examples of how to use the school one-way travel systems. But now it's a really nice opportunity for me to hand over to Ula and uh, formally introduce our ThingLink team. Ula. Thank you. Um, my name is Ula Maria. I'm the founder and CEO of ThingLink, originally from Finland. And um, as a personal introduction, I could say, I have lived the past six years in the U.S. and just this June, I relocated our family, three kids, back to Finland. And I would say just that the dust is finally starting to settle. But here I am. It looks like I'm in sauna, but I'm not. But that's a very finished thing anyways. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that's me. Uh, I am, let's see if Stuart is already online. Yes, Stuart is. I'm handing over to Stuart. Hi there, everyone. Pleasure to meet you. Just like UNESCO, Google, Microsoft recognize ThingLink is such an important part of the learning process when thinking about immersive contextual content and improving engagement levels. And as we know, as educators, I taught for six years here in the United States, higher, ed higher engagement levels will always lead to deeper learning Le learning opportunities where technology provides students the means to think critically and solve problems while also demonstrating what they know can do in a variety of ways. I'm really looking forward to today's webinar to listen and learn from you, the community, and then ultimately see the immersive experiences you will create that those students desire. Thank you. 
Thanks, Stuart. So, Ulla, um, we're now going to um, just hear a little bit from you about um, some of your thoughts about how ThingLink can help learners. Yeah, so again, welcome to this webinar and big thanks to Louis for putting this together. This is our first ThingLink education webinar this year. Um, title is Return to Learn. And as we're all returning to learn in quite uh, special and challenging circumstances, we wanted to feature uh, members of our community, educators and school leaders who are in, in, inspiration to others with their examples. And when we were, we were thinking in the past six months, we've been thinking that what is it about interactive media and what is it about tool? How can it genuinely help uh, support teachers and students? We came up with three topics that are also uh, the kind of the main topics of uh, of this webinar, and one is we have seen teachers using ThingLink to visualize learning paths more in the past six months than before. So we've seen beautiful examples of choice boards, virtual classrooms, different kind of illustrations of the resources uh, that um, students uh, have available at when they're studying at home, and and that definitely visualizing. Um, uh, learning does help organize remote work. That's That's been one of our observations. Second, we've seen really wonderful uses of audio in the background of, of virtual tours or posters, uh, teacher's voice, basically adding how teacher's voice, adding teacher's voice, simple greetings can help students maintain the connections with their classroom. So that's definitely been another topic. So it's not anymore so much about in the classroom. Um, uh, it, it's not It's not so much anymore about uh, right or wrong or uh, now it's it's really all about engagement and and hearing teacher, teacher's voice now and then in the materials rather than receiving text, text notes only it definitely helps students um, maintain the connection. And thirdly, virtual tours as fancy as they were five years ago when we first started talking about them, now we're seeing that they can really give access, increase students' mobility and give access to existing physical learning environments or situations when students have to remain uh, at, at home. So we, we'll, we will be seeing more examples of, of that. Um, and, and we have seen also from the public sector beautiful initiatives where uh, museums, for example, other cultural institutions are looking uh, for new ways to engage schools and they've contacted us. And so we have really wonderful partnership projects starting with several cultural organizations at the moment. But also, finally, we have seen that teachers are overwhelmed many times, very busy, and it is really hard to find time to create um, entire programs or uh, learning modules. So what we will be doing in the future, we will try to work more closely with education content providers and also LMSs so that, and, and online course providers so that when, um, when uh, that, that's, that teachers would have more opportunities to share material and get ready-made material or get material that they could edit. So that's it. So in the end, we're going to have a Q&A. We're going to talk about future developments. So we definitely always encourage our community to participate via the Facebook and send questions, send suggestions. We're always listening. OK, I'm going to hand back to hand over back to Louise. Uh, thanks well, again. Well, well. A big welcome. Thank you, Ula. That's just fantastic to, to hear, you know, just how well it's been used, particularly over lockdown. and. Um, you know, Stuart and I have just joined the team really this year. So we've just come in on a moving train really quickly, had to hit the ground running with everything that's happening. And, you know, the amount of growth we've seen in ThingLink just in the last six months has just been outstanding. So, yeah, a big thank you from me as well. So we're coming to that part of the webinar where there may be swag for those presenting. We can't have a winner because everything is just too amazing to choose one over the other. But um, we're now going to hear from Emily at Sterling High School. So thank you, Ula, and a big, big welcome to Emily. <laughs> how are yeah. you doing? Good, how are you? 
I'm really good, thank you. So I'm just going to share my screen um, and show everyone this amazing example. And you can start to tell us how it came about and uh, how it's been effective in helping some of your students um, in Sterling High School. So there you go. Would you like to tell us a bit more about it, Emily? So the very first thing that we used BrainLink for was um, on our S1 transition website. So that was for the new primary sevens just coming up to high school. And we thought it was really, really important for these pupils to be able to interact with the staff at school, but also the other students before they came up. And we thought that the best way to do this was through their videos um, and voiceovers to go along with um, our slides. So we sent that out and then we kind of realized that the best way for them to find their way about this big new school um, because of like all that new added complications like our one-way system um, and just because of coronavirus in general we added um, like we the added complications sorry um, where even like our senior buddies would get mixed up so we decided to shoot some 360 photos of the school over our summer holidays um, just to kind of make sure that the new S1 pupils and their parents were able to see the one-way system and just to get to know the school a bit better because they didn't have their transition days in the first place. And we thought that using ThingLink was a really easy way to put it together and just for it to come out really nicely in the end. So our deputy head teacher um, created accounts for all of the senior leadership team. And we all worked together to produce the content and to kind of link everything together to create the tour. Um, and we also realised that it wasn't as interactive as we wanted it to be in the first place. So we added some video type things, um, just introducing the departments and showing what kind of things that the pupils could do there. Um, but in the beginning, not many of us had used ThingLink, so we were a wee bit stuck and we weren't 100% sure of how to do it. But after looking at the site a couple of times, we really had a clear idea and a vision of what we wanted to do and how we wanted to do it. Um, so as we started taking more photos, it just went a wee bit wrong because we took the photos the wrong way round, like the camera was facing the wrong way. But we found a tool on ThingLink that was really helpful that um, helped us to move the photos around so it started in the right place. Um, and in the end, it was really easy for us to pull it together and by using ThingLink and adding the 360 shots together, we ended up with a really nice project. And we also really liked um, adding the videos and adding our own photos on the tags because I think it added a bit more of a personal touch. But yeah. Emily, big round of applause. Can everyone in the chat just show their appreciation for Emily because that is just awesome. Can you imagine, you know, being a pupil in your school and feeling that extra comfort for parents, for everyone in the community to know that you've got this in place and, you know, yeah, you're just a credit to everyone at your school. Absolutely Thank fantastic. You. So um, I don't know if there's any questions in the chat. Has anybody got anything that they want to ask? I just think that's just awesome, the ease of it as well. And I noticed that you'd also put a few custom icons in there. You created these kind of do not enter signs. Yeah, I think, I'm I think they were really helpful as well. Just so it's like, because it's quite difficult to know like where they're going to go and stuff. So we thought adding them will make it a bit better. Yeah, so you've got your no entry signs. Well, Emily, thanks ever so much for sharing that. It is a, a demo plan, so we're probably just about to run over our time. But yeah, you're welcome to come on our webinars every month and tell us what you're doing, because it's just fantastic to hear from you. So thanks ever so much, Emily. Brilliant. Take care. <laughs> right, so now I'm going to ask Laurie to come and join us, because Laurie, you're going to um, show us some of the work that you've been doing um, in Austin and Texas. Yes, I am. Nice to see you, Louise. Like always, I'm a huge thing link. I'm a super fan. And um, <laughs> can you guys see my screen okay? We can see it loud and clear. So I'm just going to remove So. The good news is that Ula already pretty much summarized the main three huge benefits that I see from ThingLink. And I love this educational technology. Um, I use all sorts of things. But the best thing about ThingLink is it really does, like Louise has said, it plays well with every other platform. So what you're looking at right here are the weekly choice boards that we delivered to students during our distance learning um, when quarantine first began. 
And the thing that made this so powerful, I think when families talk about distance learning being so stressful, a lot of that has to do with the children either not getting connection from their teacher or not being independent enough because the amount of information that's being delivered is so overwhelming that children end up going to their parents for help, which is extremely stressful for parents who are also trying to work from home. So as you can see from this choice board, we used like a little icon system. So the kids knew that whenever they clicked on a heart, it was like an SEL type activity. And we did flip grade activities and we did Nearpod lessons. And every week when the kids get on, we instructed them to find the exclamation point and the exclamation point would give them a screencast to talk to them about Hi what guys, was in this. welcome to week five, what? <laughs> and then we could also show them how to play little games with the same kind of video function. Well, good evening, Cameron, thanks. <laughs> and so there's a lot of silly stuff hiding in, the, in, in this uh, choice board. We could link to our existing LMS, which is Canvas. And I just thought we could have printables and tell them if the printable was hard or easy. And then we could also give them a little description of what they were going to find there. And it just was such a cool way. There is so much content in this one place. And it was so easy to translate that over and also really personal. And just as a side note, um, the, the, I teach fifth grade, which is a graduating class in elementary school. And so in the morning, I would always bother them by playing the same song over and over again. And so we did a little scavenger hunt in ThingLink that actually took them to my physical classroom and they were hunting around for math problems and they could hunt around and go to other parts of the school. And once they went to those other parts of the school, they would see teachers that gave them little video greetings and wish them good luck on their path to middle school. It was such an awesome way to, like we mentioned, get them physically back into the building. Um, and then last but not least, I'm working now on my newest thing link for this school year, which I'm making like a hub for all of the different teachers on my team to kind of base out of one place. And we'll have our Zoom links and we'll have a path to our LMS and links to all the special areas who often get forgotten because it's so confusing for families to find the content. So I am just a huge, huge super fan. And the biggest <laughs> thing that's an advantage, I think, is that it's actually really easy to use, unlike a lot of other robust technology platforms. So anyways, I highly recommend. Oh, Laurie, big round of applause, everybody on the chat. The, honestly, the comments that are coming through, Laurie, this was the most inspirational thing link I saw down the lockdown period. This is what people are saying. It yeah. is just great. And you've just kind of developed it and taken the concept further. It's just been awesome. You know what? One thing that was also really awesome about it is that um, one, any teacher that I came across that said, I want to do that. I made my background image in Canvas and I could just send them an editable template and they could change it to make it fit their grade level or their teaching and then pop it into ThingLink. And I would have teachers that I had trained in the ThingLink produce their ThingLink in 30 minutes or an hour, which is just unheard of for a platform that's this multimedia rich. Um, and so the, the hand, like the capability and the learning curve, it's just out of, it's, it's unbelievable, really, that you can do this much with without being as overwhelmed as you usually are as a teacher trying to learn a new tool. Look, there's a lot of love coming for you on the YouTube chat. <laughs> Astrid Hortivas, she's asking, can you send some links out? So I what would, we'll do is we'll to. make can sure. I, can I do yeah. that in the comments? Yeah, so we'll just get um we'll get our team to put it out on to to, to your team to put it out on out on the social media so it accompanies the webinar. So thanks ever so much, Laurie. Again, big round of applause for all of the work you're doing, and it's a real big pleasure. So we're yeah, heading across uh, back to you. <laughs> we're heading across the pond now, fast and furious to speak to Amanda Picard. Amanda, welcome. Hello. <laughs> This is the first time we've actually seen each other uh, uh, through the face to face, isn't it? Because we talk to each other all the time on chat, Twitter, yeah. and everything. Sometimes in the middle of the night. Sometimes in the middle of the night. Yeah, we're both night owls, I think. And yeah. um, so, do you want to share your screen and show us 
Travis the dog, who's just <laughs> kept <laughs> <with her>. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. So I do this very quickly. Did I do it? Yeah, that's okay. it. So okay. I'm just going to pull myself out and please introduce all of the lovely work that you've been doing. So um, I teach primary one, um, so they start off at school around about four or five years old and um, really into technology. And when we came to lockdown, at that point, pretty much my entire class could log in independently. We were using other platforms. But on the week of lockdown, um, basically what happened was I that was when I showed them how to log into Glow, which is our online learning platform in Scotland, and then Consequently, after that, on into Teams, which I knew is what how I was going to communicate during lockdown, and it literally was that last week: sit down, log in, log out, send me an emoji, and that was it. So it was a huge learning curve, and I, I knew really, really quickly that um, one of the most important things for me in my class is relationships. So yes, we can do Teams live meetings, but I couldn't see the kids; the kids could see me. And although the majority of my class were logging in and checking in with me, I could feel a little bit of kind of fatigue setting in and it, we were struggling because nobody could see each other really. And it was really, really hard. So I was looking for something and stumbled across ThingLink, which is just the most incredible tool. I am the super, super, super fan. Um, and this is one of my um, very early ThingLinks. Um, can you see that okay? Can you see that okay? I hope you can see that okay. So um, I was trying to find a way to engage my children in a really visual way and make it easy for them to navigate. Um, and so I just created it in the background. Um, I think I might have done this in Google Slides or PowerPoint, something like that. And I took a little bit of time designing the background picture, uploaded it, but then very, very quickly, I kind of get fed up listening to my own voice. So, um, I'm going to just say this. Hi, Tony Wendell. Have a care. My mum says you are all brilliant, but even the most important people. So that's what she wants you to focus on next week. We can and write some stories that they can't wait for the year written. So, um, I used a little app. To, I took a photograph of my dog, that's Travis, and I just... Um, got him to do the lesson. And this was a game changer for my primary ones. They just completely engaged with it. They were so excited. I had extra messages from families at home. And and this started my journey into the thing link dimension. And I'm never leaving. And I literally started off really simply. I used the multimedia tag for pretty much everything. I used standard tags so I didn't have anything customized um, but since then um, I have built on and built on and built on and I have loads and loads of classrooms and um, I'm just going to close that one down and because it, these are pretty much some of my lockdown classrooms that I shared with my class and the final one was actually uh, a 360 picture of our classroom which was kind of um, to end the year on and this again, the kids just loved it because we hadn't been in school for three months, um, which is a really, really long time. Excuse the mess, it literally is exactly as we left it. Since then, um, I kind of have been having a little ponder. We ponder about how to uh, keep going with Thing Link, but use it to help me teach. And but I also want to be able to have a Thing Link that the kids can use in my class independently. So I started off thinking phonics, how do I teach phonics? All the resources I need for phonics, there's a tab for open for this song and there's PowerPoint open for this. So I thought ThingLink, if I could gather everything together in ThingLink, um, and this is my current ThingLink, which has grown arms and legs and all sorts of things and it's growing and growing and growing. So I'm gonna show you this just first. This is the one I've been really working on. Um, so that's just all the phonics sounds. It's a tour, um, and I've got a little apple, which is a tag that is a custom tag. And then I've got my teaching board, which I've embedded a sway. So all the teaching points that I want to use for a sound. And then I've got little videos of from um, YouTube, so Mr. Thorne and Geraldine. 
And then we've got another sort of item here, which is from BBC um, iPlayer, and then different ways of forming the letters. And then the final thing, I'm teaching keyboard skills as I teach phonics. Where on earth is the phonic sound on the keyboard? It's a blank one, ones with capitals, and then one with the actual little small like that. So that's kind of like the phonics part of it. I've also got um, the maths area of the classroom. Um, I mean, I could talk all night about thing links. So I'm not going to, tr I'm going to try not to do that because I literally could go on and on and on. Um, this morning we were doing the number three. So I've got a tour. Uh, and again, I've got a story. So I read the story to them about Butterfly 3. Butterfly 3 lives in an airy butterfly house with lots of rare butterflies and moths. So this for me makes teaching super easy. I can be teaching this. Again, um, there's a sway all about number three, couple of videos, how to form it. Such an easy thing to use. And I'm also, if we happen to ever go back into lockdown, I can share this with parents. Parents can use this and kids can use this and I can use it to teach with, which is just amazing. So I'm going to stop there and stop sharing my screen because I literally could talk all night. <laughs> wow, well, big round of applause right across the whole of our YouTube audience and everyone in the broadcast studio is just absolutely going crazy for this. Your phonics board, wow, that's an immense amount of work yeah. that's gone into that, Amanda. Yeah. But it's so useful surprised. and it saved me so much time over the years, so yeah. Yeah, so absolutely fantastic and uh, can't wait to see what you do next. And thank you for joining us and being part of our webinar. So with a farewell to Scotland now, we're heading over to Italy into Europe because I'm delighted to welcome Carmen. Carmen, join us. Yes, thank you. Hi there. Hi, everyone. Uh, we're delighted that you can join us and you're going to show us some of the examples that you've got. You're going to share your screen now. Yeah, um, and it's, I must admit, when I saw this example, I just thought it was the most colourful, bright example of a coronavirus I've ever seen. <laughs> can you see? Can you see that? Yes, we can okay. see that right now. now. I'm just going to remove myself and hand over to you, Carmen. Okay, thanks. So, first of all, thanks to you, thanks to the Thinkling community, especially the Thinkling Italia community, and uh, also to our Astrid, to our inspiring colleague and administrator, thanks to whom I got to know this uh, amazing web tool. So during the lockdown, I devoted some lessons to coronavirus topic in order to have my students reflect on this uh, unexpected situation. So they just started uh, creating some um, uh, products and uh, I thought uh, uh, Thinkling could be the best web tool to collect them and uh, also uh, integrating with other web tools uh, with the techniques of uh, App Smash. So they just created some word clouds like this one, uh, which was inspired by a speech from an Italian actor. And they also had a brainstorm about coronavirus vocabulary, both in Italian and in English. And uh, with these words, I just asked them to produce some posters or funny memes. So they used the Padlet. And uh, so we collected some of them, their posters and funny memes, like this one, for example. Um, okay, then they uh, learned about the manifesto of Nono style communication. And uh, thanks to it, they took part in uh, some events uh, promoted by this uh, no-profit association. So they wrote some uh, rules, both in Italian and in English, uh, just to have uh, a good behavior uh, within uh, WhatsApp class chats. And uh, they also wrote uh, some thank messages in a Padlet, uh, like this one. Uh, some of my students also enjoy themselves in uh, creating uh, some two minutes lyrics for uh, correct hand washing with the help of an infographic. And this is uh, a funny example. <laughs> Uh, 
and uh, they also uh, were asked uh, some questions uh, with uh, Mentimeter about the positives or uh, and negatives uh, of uh, this situation and also some messages uh, for students around the world and uh, they also created another world cloud about the advantages of remote learning and uh, finally they played uh, a quiz uh, with the learning app about some information of uh, coronavirus so in conclusion i must say that thinklink was the best tool uh, not only to collect their works but also to share them with students from uh, other classes okay thanks for your attention <laughs> Oh, thank oh, you, Carmen. Thank you. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I love the way they use the embed tags as well. So yeah. you were using a lot of other ed tech tools, interactive ed tech tools, directly within your thing. Just, 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 just really my like well. well. Yes, this was a fantastic opportunity that the Thinkling gives us to collect uh, other resources. Yeah. Thanks ever so much, Carmen. Big Bye, round of applause Carmen. and thank you ever so much thanks. again. Thanks so we are now going to head over to London, although Rachel is not from London. Rachel is all the way from Australia. Rachel, welcome to our ThingLink Return to Learn webinar. It's great to see you, you webinar pro. <laughs> thank you so much for having me on. <laughs> oh, we've got, got a sound coming. Oh, we had a little bit of a sound delay there. So I'm just going to add your screen in and we can hear all about your um, thing link that you created. And what I, what I liked about this was that whilst we've been using um, thing link and seeing examples for learning and teaching, you've actually used thing link to help the process of accessing technology. So it's a really nice kind of rounded way of using thing link. So I'm not going to spoil it. I'm going to remove <laughs> myself and over to you. So thanks ever so much. Thank you, Louise. So as part of uh, sort of my sort of bit of a story, I was a classroom teacher previously uh, and I was really fortunate enough uh, to be brought in at the Leo Academy Trust during the height of the lockdown. Uh, and one of the things that I wanted to do was to be able to provide training materials that weren't just in a sort of stagment, here's a, you know, here's a PDF of documents that you can work through. But actually, we also wanted to be able to share this so that they could learn how to use their Chromebook more effectively, especially when we had new teachers that were accessing Chromebooks for the first time uh, and weren't used to sort of how they could go about using this. Uh, so you can see here, one of the big benefits is just that ability to sort of have all of your icons either customizable. So you can go in and these are all just done in uh, Google Drawings. Uh, and then you just save them as S SVG files and then you can simply upload and customize. So it's just that nice way uh, to be able to bring that interactive content in. Uh, and then you can see that some of the tags have just been done as text tags just to sort of point out what it is that they are. So, for example, the search key on a, on a Chromebook, there isn't a caps lock key. So it's always worth to sort of highlight that to, to users that are new and that they do have a USB port as well. Uh, and then even things like including things like their keyboard shortcuts are where they can go to find out about this. Uh, and even just the use of a touchpad, because on a Chromebook, if you've never used one, uh, it's very different in terms of how you actually go about accessing it. Um, but one of the best things was just being able to show sort of real examples of how they can quickly create lesson content. So being able to easily embed a Google form directly in and being able to go through and complete it so we can go in and say hello everyone watching uh, <laughs> and of course I've, I've triggered uh, the Google Home there and then uh, even for anyone that is doing computer science and coding uh, that you can actually embed scratch projects uh, but mine hasn't come through yet there we go. Uh, so you can easily embed scratch projects directly and these are completely playable uh, you can also go through and link to other tools and have these go in directly as well. So if you've created another tool, this is a great way to sort of build in that aspect of having multiple tools that link together. Uh, and you can even bring in um, tool created tools as well. So you can have that immersive virtual reality experience that is embedded directly in. And, and obviously I'm from Australia, so I can't resist uh, to share one of my favorite places there. 
Um, and then obviously for our teachers, we um, sort of, you know, looked at using a wide range of different ed tech apps. So it was very important for us to sort of be able to show how easy it is to embed, for example, a Wakelet collection so I can go through and have that collection directly and be able to interact with it. You can even pull in your cahoots. Uh, so again, I do, I do apologize, it's taking a little bit of time, uh, but you can see here that this Kahoot will come up so you can actually play it directly within, uh, even Flipgrid, so you can have all of your pupil Flipgrid responses. It means as well that they can record their responses directly within, so they don't need to be jumping between, so it's a nice way to app smash between as well. Uh, and again, this is just a book creator book and you can see here that you can interact with the book as normal. So it's just that nice way. Uh, and even Nearpod lessons, I know one of the other educators on before mentioned uh, that aspect of using those Nearpod lessons. So if you do use Nearpod, then you can embed these really easy and then your pupils have that one spot where they can access and they can join that lesson and then they can go through uh, and access all of the material in the same way that they would uh, if you just simply shared a link. Uh, and, you know, equally the same with Edpuzzle, you know, pupils can go through, they can watch those videos, but you also have that interactive aspect of getting those pupil responses in. Um, so for me, it was really important to, to be able to have everything linked in. And because it's so quick and easy to add new hyperlinks in uh, and embed new content, it means that it's really quick and easy. Um, you know, I've just gone through and, and quickly added a few extras here on the side here. So you can see that when you bring it up, it'll just add that new content. Uh, and possibly one of my favorite things is uh, within ThingLink is just having that immersive reader, which means that for pupils that, you know, are struggling to, especially for little learners, that if you're struggling and you're giving them a whole bit of text, that they can actually have that read back to them as well. That's awesome. What a whistle stop tour. Big congratulations <laughs> and a big round of applause from the whole of the studio. Everyone in our backstage green room is just going wild for this. Lots of people asking for your links as well. So what you have got on your handle there is uh, Rachel at Tech Miss C. And we urge everyone to go over to Twitter and follow everyone that's been presenting um, today. But that you you just gave us a little treat there of your other <laughs> project, which Oh, do you want to introduce it? Because it is awesome. Oh, thank you. Uh, so my project is Badge Tech uh, and, you know, very exciting because obviously ThingLink does feature on there. Uh, and what this is, is just a central place for all educators to be able to go to uh, and find their different um, qualifications that they want to learn. Uh, and, you know, one of the big benefits is obviously when they go through, they can see all of the various different certifications in one place. They don't need to go digging through and trying to find them. Uh, and ThingLink do have their own uh, as part of the Microsoft Education Certifications. Uh, so you can find the direct link uh, at badgetech.com. Brilliant. <laughs> and that was a project that you did as part of your innovator project, wasn't it? it as is. well. So you've yep. done that completely off your own back. You know, it's just a, an interest and a passion project that you've had, which has yep. benefited so many people globally. Um, having that one central place to find out where you can collect those badges. So big round of applause to you. Everyone, I'm sure, is showing their virtual hugs, their love, <laughs> people trying to show their appreciation. So as with everybody, we will send you our special thing link lanyard and reclaim wooden badge if you didn't get one at BET when I had them there. So we will be sending those. <laughs> Thank <up>. you. <laughs> Uh, I'll say goodbye to Rachel. Thanks ever so much, Rachel. That's just been Thank amazing. You. Um, so also, um, if anybody watching wants to join our next webinar, we're going to do this monthly and we can't get enough of people sending us their examples to showcase. So we would like to expand our reach. So if you do want to feature on a future webinar uh, as part of our demo slam, then drop me an email, louise at thinglink.com. We'd be delighted to hear from you. So it is now my great pleasure to introduce someone again who's been a great source of inspiration to me and that is El Michelle. Welcome to our webinar, El Michelle from Tallahassee in Florida. 
<laughs> oh, this is amazing. I, I don't know how everyone else feels, but I am so inspired by everyone who's presented all the demos. This is just, this is truly a return to learn, but with a real forward edge. I'm, I'm telling you, this is, this is awesome. Oh, thank you. So I, we've got a special section um, that you and I have been working on. So I'm just going to share my screen there. And um, I don't know if you just want to introduce a little bit about yourself and, you know, what you've been doing with ThingLink. And then we can kind of explore this notion of how we can use ThingLink to uh, visualize our own skills. Well, thank you so much, Louise. And thank you, Ula, and everybody who, who's presented and who's here. Um, I'm El Michelle with El Michelle Media uh, Institute is the side that we really have partnered with ThingLink. Uh, we've been partners for the past uh, three years, bringing uh, ThingLink into uh, communities that we're passionate about, which include communities of faith and uh, minority-based communities, school systems and organizations to find unique ways to implement ThingLink just as a whole, as a product, but also to get the students involved. We had a question last year uh, that surrounded, we work with students as it relates to their own uh, personal character building. Uh, we work in uh, crime prevention and just in a lot of areas to help students stay on a track of success. We do life coaching for teens through the Teen Success Academy. And so last year there was a there was a question from a student uh, even before the pandemic about what do you do if you fear the future? And the answer in that moment that just kind of came up was why fear the future? Why not create it? And so we've used this as a premise to really empower students to dig deep within to find their skill sets and begin to create a future that they want to see. Why fear the future when you can create the future? And so when we kind of brought these concepts to Thingly as of late with you, um, Luis and, and Ula, we came up with this visualizing, uh, well, we heard about a program that you'd done previously, Luis, with the more choices, more chances type initiative and came up with this concept of visualizing skill sets. This is all about student empowerment, especially in times like these. And so we thought what better a way or use case for ThingLink than to really um, help students not only dig deep and think about their skills, but put that in a visual manner where, they're, where they will never forget that and they'll be able to move ahead uh, on a path of success. So for us, it's all about empowerment. So the, a little bit of background, because a lot of people who, who are watching this or maybe watch it subsequently um, will know that some of the work previously I did and was involved in was helping uh, young people to develop learner journeys. And, you know, they might have been called e-portfolios, but kind of drop that now. A learner journey is when you can bring together a collection of media which answers the questions, who am I in my learning? Where am I learning? What am I learning? My hopes, dreams, and ambitions. And these kind of learner journeys, whether they were WordPress blogs or Google sites, they were so rich in content that um, it was an exercise that was put together to come up with a kind of CV which teased out all of those media examples and then attached skills to them. So enabling the young person on reflection to say, well, I, well, I am, you know, good at being a team player because I do all this extra sport and I'm part of a team and I show up to training and I, I love dedicating my time to my music. I'm passionate and I'm committed, you know, so people were able to pull these skills out and you'll see on the screen there, these kind of visual skills, virtual CVs that were pulled together as posters. And then what we did was, um, was encourage pupils to take them one stage further and turn them into thing links with Canva as the base for the poster. And then, of course, they can put in all these clickable hotspots that really exemplify all of those examples so they could articulate why they felt they were a good team player. They could articulate and have that sense of oracy to what they were doing. So you and I were kind of exploring how we could recreate these with some of the students. And then we decided to kind of take it one stage further and think, well, 
you know, if I'm applying for a job in the future and I send a CV in, it might have pictures. It never used to have. It used to just be a, a Word document with just right. text on it. But now we know that in a world where you've really got to stand out, our CVs, traditional CVs, going to convey the skills and the experience. By sending a CV that's text-based, we're assuming that the reader doesn't have any accessibility requirements. Maybe they don't have English as a first language. Maybe a visual representation of me would do me more justice right. and how give me the voice. And I was just thinking, how many people, hands up, have put they could speak a language on their CV and they can't? They can only just about order a beer. <laughs> so, I th well, how cool would it be if you could put in a tag on your CV of you saying, you know, a little bit of Spanish or whatever language you're proficient in? So you, you've you then sort of taken these concepts one stage further, haven't you? And it's um, a real pleasure to be introduced to Dayaya. Do you yes. want to show your and I'll put Daya's CV up on the screen. Yes, and it should be shared now. And so Daya is uh, a student that we have been working with uh, throughout the summer and just wanted to begin to explore this concept of visualizing skill sets, the visual uh, CV. And so if you see there on Daya, we're, we're starting very basic right now because we want, we're empowering the students to do this, but this very clean and, and simple picture just draws us right into Dayaya. And then if you see some of the other uh, uh, links there, you can find out a little bit more about, you know, who she is. Uh, you can also hear her voice. Let's hear her. Greetings, I am Dayaya Jones, a third year business administration scholar from Tampa, Florida, and I currently attend Florida A&M University. I'm an entrepreneur running my business called Dayaya Studios LLC, where I offer professional videography and photography services. You know that person that always notices the little things when you're watching a movie? <laughs> well, that's me. I'm also the type of person that actually sits and reads the credits at the end of every single movie. Well, that's because <laughs> filmmaking is really my passion, and I aspire to turn my small business into a huge production studio and create Oscar award-winning films. Isn't that amazing? And then yeah. she just goes on and, and shows us different videos that she's created. These are all things that we're finding sometimes when um, the students that we've mentored, just to show you. We've got a bit of a, an echo on the screen on the on the sound there. Okay, so we'll we'll stop doing that. But sometimes when you get in an interview, they kind of clam up or might forget uh, all that they can do. But when they have these uh, visual C CVs, they not only are able to have their message message out there consistently, it also serves as a consistent reminder to them that you you're headed in the right direction. You got this you are creating the future you want to see. So for us, it's a win all the way around. And Michelle, we had a little bit of a sound issue there right at the end, but nothing to worry about because I think you came through loud and clear with those examples. And I guess what we want to do now is, is to ask the, the people backstage and the rest of the community that are watching, you know, we just love these concepts of visual CVs both for personal reflection and for professional. And I know that Ula's nodding backstage going, yeah, this is exactly the kind of CV that we want to get. If people are applying for a job, we don't want to see screes, and that's a Scottish word, screes and screes of text. And, you know, we want to see real living voices and to hear from the heart from people. Um, and that to me shows digital skills. It shows confidence. It shows initiative. It really shows. And if teachers are encouraging young people to use these types of skill sets with digital tools, then, then we're, we're making a great path for them to be able to do that. I wish we had more time. You know I could talk to you all day. So yeah. thank you. Big round of applause for you and all the work that you're doing. And you will come back and see us on a future episode, won't you, when we have Absolutely. our next Absolutely. We'll have more CVs. Thank you. Thanks ever so much. Take care. Thank you. Oh, wow. So now we only have about 10 minutes left, um, which is just to kind of run through all the things that we're doing with ThingLink. So I'm just going to put my um, 
uh, slides back on and just show you some of the things that we've been doing. And sometimes, you know, we, we think that um, we uh, know what developments need to happen, but the best developments will come from you. And we really want you to know that we're listening to your feedback. Um, we take that on board. We've got a fantastic dev team. If you want to keep up to date with our updates, because they're sometimes released quite quietly, you can go to bit.ly forward slash uh, thinglink updates. And there's just a really nice page that Ivan and our support team puts together. But over the last few months, you'll have seen we've got the tour tags that are improved. You saw quite a few examples there um, where people were having a little timer um, and they would show the thumbnail. Um, so that's been a really nice improvement. And it's also got a text label there. So you can put the um, text of where that tour icon's going. Uh, our native tags are now supported in VR mode. So if you are using VR headsets, then our text and media tags and, um, for example, being able to upload a video directly in that text and media tag is going to work in VR mode as well. Um, we've heard that people wanted to see Italian and Spanish and Korean and Arabic, Russian, French and Finnish um, into our language interface. So those languages are now available directly in the interface. And don't forget, Immersive Reader will convert your tags into 80 different languages as well. If you're using ThingLink for videos, um, you can now put custom thumbnails on like you would do for a YouTube video. And one of the things I haven't put on here was that we upped our video limit to 10 gigabytes. And that was partly because we were seeing more teachers sharing tutorials and they wanted to have um, a bigger upload limit for their videos, particularly over the last few months. As you heard, we launched our Microsoft Education Center course. We've had something like 400 people complete those now. Um, and we also launched our official partnership with Google for Education. Now, these are now, as of today, available for you. So if you go into your ThingLink editor interface, your tag editor, you can see the hide VR button. Because sometimes people say, well, what's that in the corner? And if you're not using VR headsets to view the uh, uh, 360 image, then you maybe want that removed. So if you do want to remove that for the future, that you, you can do that. If you've already got tools created, you can pop back and toggle that and it will remove it for you. And this is new and I didn't realize how good this feature was until I created a tour yesterday. But you'll see at the bottom, if you hit those couple of squares, it brings up a scene selection. So you can see all the scenes in your tour and now there's a search function there. So this is a sterling um, high example that um, Emily presented earlier on and how cool would it be that if suddenly you were in the physics classroom and you wanted to jump to the Mandarin classroom, um, you could just type that in and it would take you straight there. Now this is um, work in progress, but this is your first sneaky peek. So we are going to introduce a new user interface. This is big news for us. So. Those of you who have known and loved ThingLink for a very long time will know that there was a huge amount of work that went into uh, developing the tag editor, the editor interface, which has got the ability to record your voice and um, all the different tag types. So it's the user interface now that we're working on and you can just get a sneaky peek there in progress that when you log in, it's gonna have this really nice clean image and clean feel to it. And then you'll see other features that come in as well, including users and groups. So with the groups, you'll be able to add a group to a folder, um, which gives you much more flexibility with creating collaborative thing links with groups of students that you're working with. So this is for the classroom teacher account and the school district account. And as you can probably see on the screen, before I can even get the words out, this is one of the most hotly requested things over the last few months when people were creating interactive tours. And that's the ability to bulk upload all of your media. So if you've gone into your school with your phone and you've taken 
40 different 360 images and they're on your desktop in a folder you'll be able to upload those and uh, thing links will be created automatically with all of those media types that have been uploaded and that's not just for 360 that's for images video 360 as well so i hope that's given you a really nice sneaky peek of the product side of things and now we move to the pd pathways and um, I put a, a notice out um, to our Facebook community um, asking people, you know, what was the news that you would want to see? I think it was Ula actually put a question in and understanding our own pathway um, for the PD opportunities. So first of all, in the batch of our own ThingLink certifications, we will be introducing a new ThingLink certified educator and we want to make sure that it ties in with the new user interface and the new tag editor that you've already seen, but the new user interface. We will be introducing a new ThingLink certified trainer um, certification. And that is really for people who want to take a senior role or a leadership role in training or cascading ways of using ThingLink in their organizations. Now, some of you who have been friends of ThingLink for a while will have seen the annual teacher challenge. We're going to bring that back for 2021. And that will be for people who want to just keep topped up with their certified educator. Um, for example, as you saw with the visualizing skill sets, we really want to see your examples of how you might create that visual CV. Um, so we want to see them now, but we also will probably have a teacher challenge that will be around creating those those visual CVs because, you know, as we've all seen, that's just a, a really great development. Um, we're, we also forget sometimes that we're used heavily in e-learning, so work-based environments and thinking about digital skills of the workforce, but also particularly recently with lockdown, how organizations can enable staff to develop their own skills from anywhere, anytime. So an e-learning specialist is on our radar as well. So that's our first chunk of um, certifications. The second, we try, and I don't think I've ever seen a webinar like this where we've had app smashing coming out of our ears. There's been such a fantastic range of ed tech tools, but as you know, we very much are aligned to our strategic partners. That is Microsoft, so we'll be putting in a new Microsoft Education Center course, which will be a follow on from our first one, which was creating visual learning materials with ThingLink. Um, and then we'll also do a course that focuses a little bit more on the kind of Google for Education app, so Google Classroom and some of the Google native apps within ThingLink. Um, a few months ago, I was delighted to run a YouTube webinar um, with Martin Coots, who's a very well-known Apple learning professional specialist. And he showed us how you can use some of the Apple native apps within ThingLink. And we thought that would be a nice way of being able to show people how you could use things like Keynote, Apple Clips, et cetera, within ThingLink. So there's three very much industry partner based certifications. And last by no means least, these are kind of support channels that are available. Our ThingLink support will always keep going and there'll be videos embedded and how to's. Our YouTube channel will keep topped up and our webinars as well. So we really hope you'll join us. So I have two minutes left. Um, sticking to time and I'm going to bring Ula back in um, just so that we can close our um, webinar and we are delighted to offer those a uh, voucher. Ula, we have yes. a code. <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, so now it's a good time to talk to uh, send a note to school principals or colleagues. We have a campaign both for teacher accounts and school accounts, district accounts. Stuart is online still. If you want to talk about school licenses, district licenses, shoot an email to Stuart, Stuart at thinglink.com. Otherwise, you can just use the code RTL2020 and get a 20% uh, discount on premium cl classroom licenses. And again, we always sponsor our uh, teacher trainers. And if you have done a certified educator program or you have a project you want to do many times cultural institutions reach out to us and say hey we want to work with this school can you sponsor us 
we we do these kind of projects all the time. So feel free to shoot us an email if you have a project in mind you want to do. Brilliant. Thank you, Ula. And we do have our education communities as well. There's been a couple of lovely comments in the chat asking to hook up with some of the um, educators that have been on our, our webinar. Um, you can do so. Follow them on Twitter. But don't forget, we'll be putting out links. The deck from today as well, we'll put out as well as YouTube. And I can't finish without saying and acknowledging the tremendous amount of work that you've all been doing, um, friends, partners, colleagues of ThingLink. Um, it's been truly amazing to see the, the work that you're doing, which has been really innovative. And this has been echoed by Audrey Azule from UNESCO. And some of you might have seen this quote before about, you know, we've never witnessed education disruption at this scale. Partnership is the only way forward. But it was this other sentence that had real resonance with us. And that is, we really need innovative action to unlock solutions that support learners and teachers now. And that is through this recovery process, but ongoing with this principle on inclusion and equity. And I think that every example you've seen on this webinar is living and breathing that particular statement. And it is just a really nice way to bring this webinar to a close. So Ula, um, we were going to have some q and A. I I think we've been trying to do that throughout and people can always get in touch with us if they want to ask any other questions as well. But um, I guess we should bring that to a close and just say thank you to everybody that's watched. Thank you to everyone that's participated. And we really look forward to seeing you in the next webinar. We do have a form um, that we can put out and we'll make sure that we keep in touch and let people know when the next one is. So thank you for me. Thank you so much, Louise, for putting this together and join our next webinar. Okay, thanks ever so much, everybody. And I'm going to end the broadcast now. Goodbye, take care.